guys, it's Megan again, and I am so excited to see you today. Can you guys believe that we are already in the month of December? That's crazy, right? In just a month, we're going to be in the year 2021. Wow. So this week, we're actually going to learn about a new topic for us. We're going to learn about something that comes to us from Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16, and that's light. We're going to learn about light. Now, you guys know what light is, right? Technically, it's the absence of darkness, but for example, I'm standing in light right now, and you can see me, right? And it's easy. But what would happen if I turned all the lights off? It'd be pretty hard to see me, right? Can you guys think of some things that you have to have light for? Cooking, reading a book, doing a puzzle, even just walking, right? If you tried to walk someplace where it was completely dark, you'd have a really hard time. You'd probably stumble. You'd probably fall. You might even get hurt. Light is so important. It helps us to stay awake. It helps us to stay alert. And it helps us to stay healthy. Now, you guys, Jesus is the light. But did you guys know that Jesus also calls us to be a light in the world, to show God's love, and to help other people find their way to Jesus? Today we're going to learn about two things that Jesus calls us as Christians to be. He calls us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. All right, so first we're going to talk about salt. And I actually brought some salt with me today to help you guys kind of see what I mean by salt. Now, we all know that feeling when we have something that tastes just a little bit too salty, right? We use salt today as a way to flavor our food. And in Jesus' time, he used it similarly, but also in a really different way. And so it's important for us to know that so we can know why Jesus might have called us the salt of the earth. In Jesus' time, salt was so valuable. In fact, it was so valuable that the Roman soldiers used it as payment. They got paid in salt. Can you imagine that? Now, their word for that was called salarium. And the first three letters of that word mean salt. But salarium is actually how we get our word salary today. So you can see, it was really important, right? A lot of times we say, you're worth your salt. And that's what it meant. Also though, in Jesus' time, if salt wasn't put on meat almost immediately, that meat would go bad and it would decay and it would rot out and it would not be safe for them to eat. So in Jesus' times, quite literally, salt preserved the earth, right? So Jesus was telling us that we are valuable, that we are essential to preserving God's morality in the world. And without the salt, without us, the moral decay is inevitable. Likewise, Jesus called us the light of the world. Now, Jesus is the light of the world. But we are also called to be a light in the world. And in Jesus' time, there were no streetlights and there was no electricity. So a city that had a bunch of houses that were lit really bright would have been really easy to find, right? It would have been a beacon of hope. It would have been a guidepost for weary travelers who were traveling by night. Well, how do we become that? You guys, God is the light that illuminates us, that lets us know truth and to have peace and joy and love, right? But I want you guys to watch and listen to this really carefully. When Jesus' light fills us, that light can shine through us into a very dark world. It's not just about being a Christian or believing in Jesus. That fills us with light. Jesus made it clear that the light shines as we let our good deeds shine out for all to see. It's our actions that shine brightly, pointing others to God. So we show God's love to the world by our own loving, light-filled choices, right? For example, do you guys think that we would show God's love and be a light if we said all the right things to a friend who doesn't know Jesus and we talked to them about Jesus and we quoted scriptures and we used really nice and flowery words to them but then later they saw us being mean and unkind towards other people maybe even them maybe they saw us not preferring others they saw us being rude to a waitress at a restaurant or they saw us not letting a friend play with us at school no way. That is not how we show God's love. We can't say one thing and then turn around and do something else and expect our light to shine bright. We have to show His love as well as talk about it. We are called to live differently, friends. We are called to live differently than the world. 
So it's important to ask ourselves, am I living the way the world lives? Or am I living in a way that calls others to sit up and pay attention to God's values? When we know that something is important, like God's love for us and God's values, we should want to let others know too. Just like when something really exciting happens to you guys, it's hard to keep it inside, right? It's hard to stay quiet. That is every day for us, you guys. We know Jesus and we know that he loves us and there is nothing more exciting than that. So let's not hold it in. Jesus loved us first and it's our turn. We can show God's love to the world through our actions and through what we say by putting others before ourselves, taking time to help someone in need or just being a good friend. When people see our actions, they should be able to see God's love in absolutely everything that we do, you guys. I do have a really fun challenge for you guys this week. I want you guys to find a flashlight or maybe a light up candle. Don't use one with an actual flame and keep it close by you this week, even just today, to let it remind you every time that you see it that we are to be a light in the world. And don't forget that we do have a new memory verse for the month of December that comes to us from Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. And it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you later. Bye.